What's going on guys? Pat here at All Day Like a Shark where I share my Japanese recipe videos once a week showing you how to cook Japanese food. Today what we're going to be doing is kicking off a tofu and soy milk cooking challenge. If this is your first time here, say hello. Let me know where you guys are watching from. It's good to see you. I am streaming from my home in Orange County, California and I am ready to get started. So uh, let me know if you guys have ever cooked your own tofu at home, or if you've ever made your own soy milk. Um, those are some of the things that we're going to be doing today. And uh, let me know where you guys are watching from. I see Leilani. Hey Leilani, how's it going? I see Alice. How's it going? Good to see you guys. I feel like it's been a long time since uh, we last saw each other on our live stream from the Dashi Challenge. I think that was the last time. So uh, first things first, I wanted to uh, just get you acquainted with all this stuff that I have on my counter um, quite a bit here. Um, also, give me a thumbs up if the audio is good. Um, it's been a while since I did my last live stream, so I want to know that the audio is clear and um, we can go ahead and get started. So right here, I have soybeans. This is one cup of soybeans that have been soaked in water uh, for about eight hours. And they're nice and plump. They were actually dry before. This is what dry soybeans look like. If you can see the picture in picture. These are dry soybeans that have not been soaked. I got these from Laura Soybeans. Um, my sole supplier of soybeans at this time. Definitely recommend checking them out if you haven't heard of them before. LauraSoybeans.com um, is where you can get them. Um, here I have a finished block of tofu that I made this weekend. This is what homemade tofu looks like. I did this uh, medium, so medium softness. Show you what that looks like. Some of the water came out a little bit, which always happens when you cut it. You have worked with tofu before. So it tastes delicious. That's gonna be our end product for all of the work that we're doing today. And then here I have some freshly made soy milk. So I just did a small batch right now for us to do um, for us to use to make yuba, which is tofu skins. So I'm going to get go ahead and pour this into a small um, cast iron pan. If you have a non-stick pan, I would recommend that you use that. Um, I, I, I don't have a non-stick pan anymore. I used to have them. I got rid of them in, in favor of stainless steel. But um, I found that if you get a little bit too hot temperature wise when you're trying to make yuba, it's going to stick to the bottom and it's a real pain to clean off. Um, so you want to be careful of the temperature whenever you're doing your yuba skins, your tofu skins, um, because if you don't watch it, you're going to scorch and you're going to get it stuck to the pan. And then there's also the potential that it's going to boil over, which would really make a big mess in your stove and it's going to be really hard to clean off. So this is about uh, one and a half cups. I'm going to pour that on here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you guys can see it. We're just going to put this on medium low heat. And as the uh, soy milk cooks, it's going to form a film on the top layer. So if you've ever reduced milk on the stove, for example, you'll notice that it'll, it'll create like a, a thin layer on top. That's the same, same thing that we're going for with the tofu or the soy milk. Um, and then that's going to create our yuba. So all you have to do is you have to use pure soy milk. So you don't want any kind of additives in there, if possible. You don't want to use like vanilla soy milk or... Um, any other kind of soy milk that has other stuff other than soybeans and water, which is what we're using today. So go ahead and that was the wrong burner. Go ahead and put the burner on there. We'll watch that closely. And I just use um, chopsticks to pick out the uh, Yuba skins when they're ready. So as soon as you notice that um, a skin is forming and I'll show you what that looks like, that's when you can go ahead and pick it out, put it onto a plate and it's ready to eat. So it's very easy to do. All you need is fresh soy milk and a lot of time. It does take a lot of time, but the texture and the flavor that Yuba provides is uh, incomparable, in my opinion. It's one of my favorites. And hello it is, whoever it is that just joined, let us know who you are and where you're watching from. Uh, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get our soy milk started. So like I said, I, had a, I did a small batch so that we could do Yuba because it takes a long time. I'm gonna put that on low, medium, low heat so it doesn't burn. And then here I have okara. Actually, this is almost going to be okara because there's a little bit of soy milk st still stuck in here. Um, it was really hot, so I didn't squeeze all of it out, but I'll show you how I do that. And 
In order to get our soy milk started, we're gonna be using these uh, soybeans. So this is one cup of soybeans. And we're gonna go ahead and drain it first since we don't want the uh, soaking water. I'm just gonna drain it really quick and then rinse it off. And I always, ever since I started making my own um, soy milk, I always remove the skins. I don't know if you guys have done that before. Hello Amanda, good to see you here. Have you guys, let me know in the comments if you guys have made tofu or soy milk at home. Or if you haven't made either of those, have you made your own nut milk? Because nut milks are very similar to what we're doing today. All right. So what I do to uh, get the skins off of the soybeans is I put them in a water bath and I just rub them together very gently. So let me change the camera angle here just so that you guys can see. So here's a close up. You want to be as gentle as possible, and as you rub these beans, the soybeans together, oh, it looks like the uh, yuba is getting hot, the skins will gradually come off and they'll float to the top. So when that happens, what you can do is just pour it off. And um, I usually have a little bit of running water so that the water level stays high enough so that the skins just fall off. So you can see right here some of the skins are already floating. And supposedly it improves the uh, texture and flavor. So I always remove the uh, skins in this fashion before I actually puree every everything together. So it looks like Leilani says she does almond milk. I make almond milk too. It is delicious and tastes so good when it's homemade. And it's much easier to make than soy milk, actually. So I'm just keeping an eye on my... Yuba. So right now, I don't know if you can see it in the other camera, but the little pan is steaming, which is what we want, and the skin is starting to form on the top. So I usually, um, when I had my non-stick pans, I used the widest one possible because that gives you the most surface area to evaporate more liquid faster. That's my pro tip there. If you have a wider pan, um, use that, and uh, that'll get your um, Yuba skins formed quicker. So I'm just pouring off. Oop. So I usually use a strainer to catch any um, stray beans, but you can see here in the picture-in-picture, uh, -picture, these are the soy milk skins. We're trying to get rid of those. All right, so any questions so far? It's not too difficult um, once you've done it once. I think the first time is always the hardest, right? Like with anything that you try to learn. It looks like Amanda says she's never made tofu or nut milk, but she's pretty interesting. She's pretty interested because they don't drink cow's milk. Yes. It is a definitely, it's definitely a good way to get another type of liquid into your diet if you can't drink cow's milk. I don't know what life would be like for me if I couldn't drink cow's milk because I eat a lot of ice cream. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I'm just keeping an eye on my yuba. I don't want it to boil over. So there's different ways that you can make your soy milk. You can make it more concentrated um, or you can make it more dilute. Depends on what you're doing with it. If you're just gonna drink it, you can just do it dilute which is like a one cup to maybe seven or eight cups of water. Or if you're gonna be doing something like a kinugoshi tofu, which is like a, it's a soft silken custard-like tofu, it's one of my favorites. And it's something that they don't serve, they don't really serve it in restaurants here. Um, in Japan, they'll, they might serve it, especially if you go to like a tofu specialty restaurant. Um, but it's one of those things that you gotta either eat in Japan or make yourself. So, when, you do, when you're doing kinugoshi tofu, which is a soft, silken tofu, which is like a custard, it's super creamy, and it tastes like amazing, um, I usually do a thicker, more concentrated uh, soy milk, so one cup to like three or four cups of water. Um, and then the same thing for yuba, so the tofu skins that we're making today, this is more of a concentrated soy milk, where we're doing like one cup of so uh, soybeans to three or four cups of water. 
And if you do end up using a more concentrated um, or a thicker soy milk for, uh, or not, yeah, if you do, if you do end up making a thicker um, soy milk, you may have to adjust the amount of niagari or the, the coagulant that you're using um, because there's just going to be more uh, protein for the, uh, I guess, the coagulation to take place. So you need to use more. All right, so let me change the camera angle. Since the soybeans are about done, we're just going to go ahead and puree them in five cups of water. Like I said, I like we're going to be doing a little bit of a, a concentrated version today. Um, let me change the camera angle so you guys can see what that yuba looks like. So I'm going to poke the surface so you can see the skin. I don't know if you can tell, but the skin is already there. So once it's completely formed, it'll cover the full uh, surface area of the soy milk. And that's when you can pick it up and put it onto a plate. So probably give that another couple minutes or so. As you can see, it takes a while, but sometimes good things take time, right? So Leilani says you can use a flat screen strainer to remove those skins faster. Don't I sound like a mom? No, you don't sound like a mom, but I don't know what a flat screen strainer is. Never heard of those. That, whatever that is. What is that? I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. So this is a, my Vitamix holds eight cups of liquid. So if you have a smaller blender, you might need to do this in batches. And it is gonna get noisy. So if you guys have your speakers on, you might wanna turn them down. Just a warning, I'm gonna blend this for about a minute and 30 seconds on the high, the high speed. And then we'll go ahead and put them into the pot. So I have a, two saucepans here that I have prepared. Um, I usually like to do, uh, split the batch up into two pots because it's easier to work with versus, versus one giant pot. Um, personal preference there. So Leilani is going to send me a picture of a flat screen strainer. I don't know. Have you guys, have you heard of the, that thing? Alice, Amanda, is it just me? I don't know too many many things about kitchen gadgets. Okay, so here, here we go. We're gonna turn on the blender, so turn on your speakers. This is your warning. Ready? Here we go. So this looks like it's pretty good to me. You obviously don't want any chunks of soybeans, otherwise it's gonna end up in your okara, which is what we're making next, which is the soybean pulp left over um, from the soy milk making process. So first thing that we're gonna do is put about half of this into this pot. And then we're gonna turn it on medium heat and we're gonna stir it continuously so that it doesn't burn. Got some soybeans stuck there. And we'll do the same with this other pot. I like to split it up as evenly as possible. So we're gonna bring this to just before a boil and then we're gonna cook it um, for about nine to 10 minutes. And we're gonna stir constantly because if you don't, it's gonna scorch on the bottom of your pots and it's gonna be really difficult to clean. So make sure you're always stirring. So I have two spatulas here. Yuba is looking like it's making some progress. Not quite. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit since we're done with the other stuff. And we can go ahead and squeeze out the rest of the soy milk from the okara here, which I have prepared. Let me put this away. Some space. 
Bocata can be used for all kinds of different things. You can use it in baked goods, uh, vegetables. You can use it in fried foods like koroke with potatoes. So koroke is like a fried um, potato patty with okara. It's one of my favorite ways to eat it, actually. My other favorite way is uh, okara scones. The scones are like the uh, little baked discs that are made with butter, usually. Um, but because we're using okara, that helps to make it a little bit more lighter and a little bit more filling. So I will share that recipe with you in the near future. One of my favorites. So medium heat for both of these um, saucepans. Stir it continuously. And you gotta also be careful because it can boil over. So that's another reason why you wanna stand by the stove. It's only 10 minutes. It's one of those things that you just gotta do. All right, so here is my nut milk bag. Um, if you buy like a tofu making kit, it might come with a, a strainer. Um, that's what I have right here. Actually, I don't have the strainer, but this is my little tofu mold which we're gonna be using in a, minute, in a minute. So we're just gonna squeeze out the excess water or the excess uh, soy milk here. I've seen some people where they rinse the okara out to get out any, um, I guess, residual soy milk. I just squeeze it out and then I keep it as okara. Have you guys had okara before? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Yes, Amanda says she always sees baked goods uh, using okara on cook pad. Yes, okara is, I wish they sold it in markets here. They sell it in Japan in the markets, but they don't sell it here. At least I've never seen it. Yes, so Leilani is asking, can you use a cheesecloth to strain? Yes, you can. And she has not tried okara yet. Maybe... You will, your chance will soon be coming up. You can see I got a pretty good amount of um, soy milk out, maybe about a half cup's worth. And so in here is just the soybean pulp. And I usually just save it, put it into a bowl. Show you what it looks like in a second. I need to give my pots a stir. And then we can reuse this the second batch. I'll show you this uh, very light, if you can see there. It's almost like, um, I don't know what the consistency is. If you've ever used like um, cookie dough, if you've ever made cookie dough before, it's kind of like that, but much lighter and not oily. Okay, so I think I need to give this a stir. Give this one a stir. So as you can tell, soy milk, Alice says she's never thought of using okara in scones. Me neither, until I found a recipe and it, I gave it a try, it was a good one. All right, let's turn the heat up a little bit more there. So usually when the yuba is done, the um, sides will stick or the, the side of the pan will stick to the skin. So you usually need to you know, break it off a little bit. You can see it's already starting to stick right here. You just break it off with the chopsticks like that. So it comes off cleanly. Since it's very fragile, you don't want it to break. So give this a stir again. And what I usually do with my okara is I'll save a bunch and then I'll freeze it. And then I'll use it all at once because sometimes um, just like a cup's worth of soybeans doesn't give you enough okara like we have today. Actually, we didn't make our okara yet. This is from half, half a cup of soybeans. So what we're cooking now is going to be um, three times as much as this. So it'll probably be about a cup's worth just to give you an idea. Yeah, okara doesn't taste good on its own. You need to season it. <laughs> um, since it's literally just raw cooked soybean, or it's, it's unseasoned soybeans that have been cooked. You always need to season it. Okay, so there's that. Next thing that I wanted to talk about while all this stuff is going, um, keep my eye on the timer, so it's 621. I think uh, we can stop the heat at around 627 or 628 um, p.m. 
uh, and then we'll strain it. So what I have here is Nugati. This is um, magnesium chloride. I had another one here also. Where did that one go? And here's another different brand of magnesium chloride. This is also Nugati. It's undiluted. Um, different brands may have different concentrations of the salts that are inside here. So magnesium chloride. Um, you can also use Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate, I think. And then uh, lemon juice. Um, a lot of commercial tofu is made with delta gluconolactone, which is an acid. Um, but these are salts, salt-based. So, I don't know, I guess I did something funny there. Leilani's laughing. Um, the way that you make soy milk coagulate and turn into a curd is by adding these salts, which helps the proteins to change their um, shape so that they bind together. Um, you can do it with this, the salt, or you can do it with acid. You can also do it with heat. So if you're using a very high temperature um, to cook your soy milk, for example, if you're doing soy milk hot pot, uh, tonyu nabe, um, one of the things that used to happen to me when I first started making it was that the uh, the tofu or the, the soy milk would actually curdle, which is an unwanted thing. At least aesthetically, you don't want curdles in your um, hot pot um, because it just doesn't look good. And um, one way that you can get around that is by adding a little bit of baking powder. So baking powder um, added to your soy milk hot pot will prevent it from curdling because it decreases the pH of the solution to make it more um, or sorry, increases the pH to make it less acidic. So acids causes curdles, baking powder or baking soda um, makes the pH higher, decreasing the acidity, which prevents curdling. So interesting thing right there, right there that I wanted to mention. So you can see this um, Yuba skin is uh, just about done. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out so you can see what it looks like. Make sure that it's not stuck there to the sides. Here's the first skin, and I think you can see it. There's the first skin. One of the simplest ways to eat um, yuba is by serving it with soy sauce. So use a good quality soy sauce made with whole soybeans, for example. And um, that's all you need. Maybe a little bit of wasabi. Tastes delicious. So the as soon as you pull off one skin, you, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Got something stuck in my throat. Um, you're probably gonna need to refill this. So we're gonna go ahead and put some of the fresh soy milk that we made and fill it up a little bit. I'm gonna stir my other pots here. Imagine if I had like three or four hands, I could do all this at once, plus something else. I don't know, I don't know if I'd want three or four hands though. Maybe a, a kitchen helper would be better than three or four hands. Okay, so I was talking about the uh, coagulant. This is the nigari. You always want to dilute it, um, even if it comes diluted, because if you add this straight to your soy milk, um, it's going to curdle right away and it may not get mixed in properly. So we always dilute this in about 50 mils of water, uh, which is what I have right here. So this is 50 mils, about uh, three tablespoons worth of water. We're going to use one packet. That's what the uh, instructions say here. It's to dilute one packet in 50 mils. And this would be good for about um, a little over two cups of soy milk. So the Ratio that you always want to use for nigari, undiluted nigari to your soy milk is 1%. So if we're going to do about three cups, for example, three cups is about 750 mils in American cups, and that would be about uh, 7, 7.5 mils of this stuff, nigari, the so 1%. So we're going to go ahead and drop all this in here. First time I ever had freshly made tofu was at, a, at an izakaya, which is like a, it's a kind of like a bar slash restaurant. I guess you'd call it a pub. They serve a lot of like little dishes and alcohol. 
And uh, basically they came out with a bowl of soy milk and then a little bit of nigari, the powdered form, which looks like kind of like a salt. They added that in there. They told me not to touch it. And within a few minutes, that soy milk turned into tofu. It was like the coolest thing ever. So ever since uh, that happened to me, um, I had a different perspective on tofu because I didn't know that's the way that it was made. Did you guys know that it was just soy milk and uh, coagulant? Okay, so these, it's, I think it's been about 10 minutes for this, so we're going to go ahead and get ready to strain this. Uh -oh. So you can see that this is almost boiling over. Close call. Whew, that was a close call. Almost boiled over right there. That would have made a mess on my stove. And what you can do, you see that there's a lot of foam here. I've seen some people just throw this away. This is known as aku in Japanese. So it's like the bitter, unwanted things. Usually like if you're cooking meat, beef, pork, for example, it's that scum that rises to the surface. That's called aku. The same thing here. Some people throw it away, but I keep it. I haven't really found a, much of an effect on flavor. I don't know, maybe if you're sensitive, you might want to toss it. Um, so that's done. Now what we're going to do is strain. So, I usually strain using a fine mesh strainer, um, plus my nut milk bag. And since we are doing a full batch today, I'm going to put it into a pot. And you want to be able to position this so that your whatever your nut milk bag sits in the center of the pot and you don't spill it because we're working with uh, hot liquids here. You could also do this in the sink if you want. If you're more comfortable doing that. So we're just going to strain it and then once we strain it, then we're going to have our okara. Do you guys have any questions so far? So you can see on this pot, just a little bit of scorching happened. There's just like a little bit of texture on the bottom, but if it was really bad, um, you'd see some browning there. Kind of like if you cut to milk, you scorched your milk, which you don't want. Okay, so there's one pot and we'll do this other one right here. So Leilani is asking what the name is of the magnesium chloride salts. So nigari, N-I-G-A-R-I, is the Japanese term. And that's what um, helps the soy milk coagulate. This is like one of those fun things in cooking that you get like immediate results. There's a few ways that you can get the hot soy milk out of the nut milk bag. One of them is by putting two, two lids together, which you might think is funny, kind of like you know the uh, clapping monkey at the circus. Um, you got to be careful though, because if you're using stainless steel lids, they get really hot. The, there's no heat barrier here, so you may need to use gloves but I, sometimes I just push it together with the little nut milk bag in between. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. And check on the, uh, the U-Buy here, see how that's doing. It's not quite ready. You can see it's still a very delicate skin as I poke it. And you can also use gloves. Maybe if you have like those rubber kitchen gloves, um, that might help to protect your hands a little bit. But you can see it's very hot. It's steaming right now. So what I usually do is I tie this thing up. And I use a spatula to push against it. That gets some of the uh, liquid out, but not enough. And that's where the, uh, the lids come in. 
And Alice is saying she had fresh made tofu at your table at Morimoto's. Ooh. What's, what's at your table? Is that like a, is that like a, a dining event by Morimoto? I haven't heard of that before. I almost went to Morimoto's in Vegas. I was in Vegas a few weeks ago to see Fish, one of my favorite bands. And there was a Morimoto's at the venue where they were playing at the MGM Grand. But the wait was too long and we didn't want to wait, so we didn't eat there. I've never been to one of his restaurants, by the way. Would you recommend him, by the way, if, if you've been to his place? Our table. Head fresh. Oh, got it. Typo. Duh. <laughs> All right, so if you can see what I'm doing, I'm just pushing out the extra soy milk from the pulp using the spatula. And then the last bit will be in between the lids. So that got most of it out. So now to get a little bit more, I put some of that right there. Put some of that right there and squeeze. Alternatively, if you don't want to do this, you could just let it cool and then <laughs> squeeze it out once it's cool, like we did previously. But if you wanted to get all of it in one pot, this is one way to do it. Okay. So there's that. All right, so this is our soy milk. I'm going to go ahead and measure out about three cups. We're actually, we already have some soy milk here. So I'm going to measure out maybe two cups worth. And that'll make a very modest block of tofu. Not sure what I'm going to do with the rest of it. But this is the tofu mold that I use. This is from Japan. It's made of hinoki wood, which smells amazing. If you've never smelled Japanese cedar, it smells like Japan. Um, basically, it comes in three parts. Any tofu kit um, that you get from Japan will come with three parts. This is the bottom with the holes for the drainage. These holes also go on the bottom that help to uh, allow the water to go out. And then this is the top part, which we're going to press down onto the the curdled tofu to make it into a block. And then this is what helps to form the block. So this is a thin cloth that it came with. We're just gonna set that in the middle. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna actually use this other pot here. So all of our hard work is over, essentially. And all we're going to do now, I'm going to measure out some soy milk. We're going to put it into this pot and we're going to add the coagulant. The nigari, which I have right here. I think I put it in here. I did put it in here. Yeah. I tell you, it's hard to remember what you're doing when you're talking. So I'm going to just scoop out about two cups worth. And we'll top it off with the other soy milk. There's just about one cup. And it's a little bit less than a cup. Okay, so this is one and a half cups right here. And I just need another half cup. You could also use a ladle if you wanted to. And then now, we're just going to heat this up to about 80 degrees Celsius or 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is key because like I mentioned before, temperature is one of the things that causes the tofu to curdle. That's why we need to reach that 175 degree Fahrenheit mark or 80 degrees Celsius to get that curling process started. And then we're going to add this nigari in um, two, I guess, batches. We don't want to add it all at once. Um, we're going to do it gradually. 
And then with each addition, we're going to mix it into the um, soy milk. And you'll notice right away that it starts to thicken up and curdle, which is what we want. So Alice is saying they brought a donabe with soy milk, added it to the nigiri, put it on the lid and told us to leave it. Nigari. And then freshly, freshly made tofu, yes. Did you eat it with just soy sauce or did they give you salt? Sometimes you don't need very much seasoning with fresh tofu because it's so good. All right. So usually I cook my yuba a little bit quicker than this, but I was going conservative because I'm doing all this other stuff. I don't want it to get messed up. So it usually it doesn't take this long, but you can see that the skin has formed. And then you need a thermometer for the soy milk to make sure that it's going to be at the right temperature. So like I mentioned, 100, uh, 175 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius. And once it hits that, we're going to cut the heat, turn off the heat, and then we're going to add in our nigari using either a spatula to spread it around. Um, you don't want to add it directly, like I mentioned. And then we're going to give it a few stirs and then add in the rest. Yes, Morimoto's restaurant is on my um, to-do list of places to eat. I don't know, does he have any restaurants in Japan? Do you guys know? Or is he just popular here in the US? Okay, so it's just about 80 degrees. And like we were doing before, you always wanna keep continuing to stir this so that it doesn't scorch and get stuck to the bottom is what I'm doing right now. Okay, so this is at 80 degrees now. I'm going to turn off the heat and then we're going to add in the nigari. And I'll show you what that looks like for the, uh, for the little camera right here. So I'm going to use a spoon. I'm just going to do like a tablespoon or so at a time. Oops. And I'm just going to spread it over the spoon, or the spatula, give it a couple stirs. So you can see it's starting to curdle, show, showing you on the other camera right here. Before it was very smooth and it's starting to get clumpy. And you don't want to stir it too much because you're going to affect the final um, the texture of your tofu. So here's another spoonful. Here you can really see that it started to curdle. I don't know how obvious it is, but it kind of looks like clouds. And the liquid has separated. I don't know if you guys can see that. So that's what it's supposed to look like. And we're going to go ahead and cover this up since it's done and let that go for about 15 minutes just sitting there. Where my, well, my lids are all in the sink. We'll just let this sit here for about 15 minutes. Um, and it looks like the yuba is almost done. And then once that's in 15 minutes, we can go ahead and pour it into the mold. And then we're going to put a weight on top of it. Depending on how firm you want your tofu, um, you, have, you can use a heavier weight up to two pounds uh, or a lighter weight, just like one pound. And obviously, the longer that you leave the weight on there, the more water is going to get pressed out of it and it's going to result in a firmer texture. You can see this other yuba skin is just about done. Oh, got stuck to the side. Here's another yuba skin.
and yeah. So I covered everything that I wanted to cover today in terms of the yuba, the tofu, the soy milk, and the okara. Um, let me check my notes here. I had notes for today. So let's talk about supplies. So as you know, as you saw just now, um, or before we get into the supplies, so Alice was saying she just had it with shoyu and crab ankake. That sounds really good. Ankake is one of my favorite ways to actually eat yuba. So just making an ankake sauce, which is like a thick, a thickened sauce made with soy sauce and dashi, and putting that over a bed of rice. One of my favorite ways. In fact, we might do that tomorrow. Okay, so Alice is saying that he has a restaurant in Tokyo, Dubai, so he's, he's all over the world. Wow, I didn't know that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just turning down the heat on the yuba because it's starting to boil. We don't want it to boil, you want it just before a boil, because um, otherwise the skin is not gonna form. And you'll notice on the sides that there's yuba stuck there which is fine. You just want to make sure to break it off so that it doesn't get stuck when you're trying to pull it out. Otherwise, it's going to break. So supplies. As you can see, for all of the things that we're making today, you don't really need anything besides water and soybeans. Um, if you don't have a tofu um, mold like this, you don't need one. You can use uh, like a plastic tofu container. You just recycle that, po poke some holes in the bottom so that it drains. Uh, you can also use just like Tupperware. Uh, or glassware. Um, you might have to drain off the water or if you have like a tofu press you can also use that as well. Um, and it does take a little bit of time as you as I mentioned initially the soybeans that we used were soaked for about eight hours. So what I've done if I don't want to soak soybeans all the time is I'll just freeze it. So these are soybeans that I soaked I don't know maybe a few weeks ago and I just froze them so that when I want to make uh, soy milk or tofu. All I have to do, throw it in. All I have to do is throw it in the blender with some water, and then I have my soy milk. So, uh, key tip there. And then for the okara, if you're not going to be using the okara right away, you can also freeze this. This is ready to go. If you're not going to use it, try to use it within two to three days in the refrigerator. Um, same with the tofu. Try to eat this up within a couple days. There's no preservatives in there, so it's not going to keep and plus the flavor will deteriorate after a while. I recommend that you eat it right away and I don't see why you wouldn't because homemade tofu just tastes so good. Um, so yeah, the we talked about the nigari, um, talked about the temperature, talked about uh, yeah, I think we covered everything. Oh yeah, so like I was mentioning before, one thing I wanted to finish up with was when you're making Soy, uh, soy milk for the first time, you might want to start with a dilute soy milk. So one cup in eight cups of water, and that'll be similar to like a, I guess a low fat milk in terms of consistency or the texture. It's going to be a very light um, texture, maybe similar to what you get at a store versus if you start off with like a one to three cups of water ratio of soybeans to water, that's going to be really thick, but it's also going to be really good if you want to make soft custard-like tofu, also known as kinugoshi tofu. So um, recommend that you try that whole range, one cup to one cup of soybeans to three cups of water to one cup of soybeans of, to eight cups of water, and you'll be able to see how different each of the uh, soy milk tastes and also feels in your mouth um, in terms of texture, consistency, and also flavor, because obviously the more concentrated soy milk is, the more flavorful it's going to be. Um, and yeah, so the uh, thank you, Leilani, for the compliment. Appreciate it. So let's get this. Looks like there's one more yuba skin forming. And really, all all I like to eat this with is a little bit of soy sauce. I have some soy soy sauce here. I'm just gonna put this on right now because I'm hungry. If you don't mind. And then the last thing that we'll do is we'll pull pour the curds into the tofu mold and then let that sit for about 15 minutes. And then tomorrow, I'll show you what the, the final block looks like, but it's gonna look like what I showed you at the beginning of our show. It's gonna look all uneven, but delicious. And I need to work on my tofu cutting. 
Mm. So good. All right, guys. So, um, <clears throat> if you have any questions or comments? Let me know in the in the comments below. I want to know what you guys think of this uh, little uh, first day of our tofu cooking challenge. So tomorrow, I was thinking about doing a vegetable um, with the okara, and then also a donburi with the yuba, or potentially with the tofu. I don't know. Do you guys have a preference? Let me know. And for this soy milk, I think we're probably going to keep it. I might make another batch tomorrow, and we might do a soy milk nabe on Wednesday, or tonyu nabe, since it's winter. Um, or we might do yudofu. Yudofu is like a, um, it's another type of hot pot where the tofu blocks are simmered or cooked in like a broth, usually kombu broth, which is a dried kelp. Um, and then you serve it with like a dipping sauce and vegetables and a very simple yet delicious way to eat homemade tofu. Okay, so I lost track of time. You guys know what time I started the timer on my um, curdled tofu? I think it was maybe about seven or eight minutes ago. I need to uh, get a timer when I'm doing this stuff. Okay. That one's not quite done yet. And what you can do with your yuba skins, if you don't want them to get uh, dried out, is you can actually put them in the soy milk broth so that they retain their texture, their, their smooth and delicate texture, um, and they don't get dried out. That's what I do if I, do, if I make a big batch of yuba. Usually I'll have like three or four pans going, and then I'll make a bunch of yuba, and then put it in the fridge with some soy milk, and then eat it the next day. So it tastes delicious. Okay. Let me see. So strainer, one trick that you can do, I guess it uh, looks like this is just about done to be strained. Since we don't want it, any excess water in our tofu mold, what you can do is put this strainer in and then use a ladle to scoop out any excess water while pushing against the curds. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Actually just do that right now. There you be uh this angle right here. So you can see the water has started to separate. What I mentioned. Because you can, you got to be careful if you're doing this, but you can scoop out the excess water like so. That way you have less water going into your tofu mold, which is going to drain out the sides anyway. But if you're making a big batch, that might help so that you don't make such a big mess with uh, all the water going everywhere. That's an option. Oops. And since it's winter, I like to enjoy my fresh tofu warm. In the summertime, I like to enjoy it cold. So hiyayako is one thing that I like to make, which is just cold tofu seasoned, you know, with different sauces like soy sauce, or you can make your own kind of dressing. Um, I don't know, do you guys have any uh, favorite hiyayako or cold tofu or warm tofu um, seasoning ideas? I think this one's just about done. The other thing that you can do with yuba is yuba maki, which is wrapping vegetables and or rice with the yuba skins. It's very tasty. Okay. So I don't have a slotted spoon, but if you do have a slotted spoon, you'd want to use that when you're putting the curds into the mold. And you want to be as gentle as possible because you don't want to break the structure that the curdles have made together. I'm just going to grab very delicately, put the curds in here, like so. 
You can already see how much water is left behind. And that's going to get uh, pressed out with the weight that we're going to put on top, as well as the lid. This is why it's key to use a slotted spoon, but you don't have to. All right, so there's pretty much all of it. This is going to be a thin block, which is fine. I'm just going to put all of it in. All right, so that's done. And I'll show you how I wrap up the cloth. So I like to do it the long way first, like that, and then with the other side, and then fold it over like that. And that'll give you the neatest design, in my opinion. And since we're doing a small batch, I'm going to fold it up and squish it together a little bit so that it's not going to be completely flat. Otherwise, it's going to be really thin. And then we're just going to cover this with the lid. And I don't know where my weight went, but this weighs about a pound. So we're just going to put that on top and wait about 15 to 20 minutes is usually how long I wait. If you want firmer of a texture, then do it maybe 30 to 40 minutes and see what, see how it turns out. It's up to you. And uh, this will be what turns into tofu, which is what we have right here. This is what I made yesterday. Okay guys, so appreciate you joining. Um, hope you learned something useful today and hope you get a chance to try making one of the things that we made, either soy milk, yuba, or okara, um, or tofu. So I guess that's four things. And uh, tomorrow we will resume um, with making a dish with okara, as well as the tofu and possibly the soy milk or the tonyu. And um, yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Can't wait to eat all of my tofu dishes and soy milk dishes. I'm very hungry right now. Looks like Leilani is excited to try all these recipes. I'm excited for you too. So thanks for joining and um, hope you have a great rest of your night and I will see you tomorrow. Tsukaresama, uh, which means good job, good work in. See you tomorrow.